In today's video for WordPress, we're going to be checking out dynamic content for Elementor and specifically how we can create much more dynamic conditional based forms. So if you've ever wanted to create something a lot more specific, a lot more detailed and a lot more functional, this video is going to be for you. My name is Paul C. This is WP Test, the channel where I help you get more from WordPress. If this is your first time on the channel and you enjoy what we do, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so first of all, this is a sponsored video, part of six that I'm doing for dynamic content for Elementor. If you want to check out the other videos, you can take a look at the link in the screen in the corner right now and also in the description below. They'll take you through all the other videos in this series. So in this one, we're going to be specifically focusing on dynamic conditions, conditional logic, and working with forms, all to get much more creative, much more powerful forms inside Elemental Pro. So if you're interested, let's just jump over to the dashboard now and take a look at how we can set things up. Now to start off with, let's take a look at what we're going to create. I'm going to be using a previous template that I've set up as part of a previous video, which links through advanced custom fields and creates a vehicle listing. If you want to take a look at the video with more details about that, I'll put a link in the description below so you can take a look and see how things are set up. However, that's not really the focal point of this particular video. With the template set up, we're going to be using just the single template that's part of Elementor Pro. So if we scroll down through, you'll see I've got various different bits of details some text, the vehicle itself, the manufacturer and so on. Some of these are custom fields, some of these are normal fields as part of WordPress. If we scroll right the way down, you'll see we've got this form entry, which allows us to do two different things. We can either book a test drive or we can find out more about this vehicle. Now, depending upon which of those options you choose from the first select list, will change the content below of the field elements. So let me just show you what I mean. If we choose a sales inquiry, we simply have the name, the email, and the message that we want to send through to the sales department. We've also got a hidden field in there that just specifies what vehicle this email relates to. And I'll show you how to do all of this in a moment. However, if we change this over to booking a test drive, obviously we would need different information. So we'll choose book a test drive, and you can see we now open up two additional fields called pick a date and choose a time. If we click on pick a date, you can see we've got a date range we can pick from inside there and we choose a time, we can choose a time scale inside there as well. Now, obviously there are a few limitations to what we can do with this, but this is just more of a demonstration on how to do it and not so much what you want to do. So now we've seen what we're going to create, let's take a look at how we build this out. So I've jumped over into the dashboard, opened up the template that we're going to work with, and we're ready to start building things. Now, like I say, you don't have to use templates, so you can build this directly on a page. You don't need dynamic fields from advanced custom fields. Just want to show you how you can combine those two elements if you want to. However, you could put whatever kind of form data you want to put inside you. It's totally up to you how you want to work with it. So first thing we need to do is put in a form. Now we're going to use the normal Elementor Pro form for this. So we're simply going to come up and just type in form and we're going to drag in a normal form and drop that underneath our heading. So you can see that just pulls in the normal data you'd expect as part of an Elementor Pro form, the name, email and message. And all that's perfectly fine. First thing we want to do though is just make sure that we add in the extra fields and just style this a little bit. I don't want these labels to display all the time. So we're going to close those down. And other than that, we've pretty much got everything we need in place. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in those extra fields and use various different fields to trigger different fields. So we've got name, email, and message. We need to add in some extra ones. So let's just add a new item in there. What we're going to do is we're going to name this one and we're going to set some conditions up on other fields based upon your choice inside you. So the first thing you want to do is set this to be a select field. And this just allows us to then set the department we want to send this through to. And then we can use those as triggers for further things down the line. So you can see we've got the type is set to select. The label we're just going to put in as department. Is it required? Yes, we want to make it required. So you have to choose something from there. And then we can put the options in. For this, we're going to be using two different options, sales inquiry and book a test drive. Now, these are important because these will be used as the triggers for further things as we go through. So this is the first thing we've done. Next, we can come over to the advanced option, and it's always good practice to change the ID from these default field one, two, three, and so on to the name of the field that actually relates to. So for this example, we're going to put in department, 
And you can see that now edits the short code below. We can use these short codes and we will use some of these later on. And it's very useful to use these short codes because if you want to create more complex, more feature rich uh, forms, these are a great way of customizing various elements. And I'll show you that, like I say, as we go through this. So we want to put this at the top now. Next thing we want to do is put in one of the optional fields. So we're going to add another item in. For this, we're going to set this to be date. And choose that option. Label, we're going to call this pick uh, date. Once you've done that, placeholder, we can do the same. So we're going to copy that from there. We're going to drop that in there so people can see exactly what they're expected to do. We can, if we want to, set a minimum and a maximum date range. I'll leave that as it is. But if you wanted to restrict this to be over a specified time period, for example, you only wanted this available in March, well, you could do just that. Is it required? No, because it's going to be an optional field. So we don't worry about that too much. But again, you can set these up to be exactly what you want. We'll set this to be 50%. And then we can put the date and the time next to each other. So once we've done that, the next thing we need to do is just come over to the advanced section. Again, we're going to change this, put in date in there so it makes more sense. And that's pretty much all we need to do. You can see if we come over to the next options, we can also include icons, descriptions and conditions. However, like I say, at the moment, we'll leave those as they are and we'll just set the content. Next up, we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to add another one in. We're going to set this one to be time. Change the label to pick a time. And the same for the placeholder. Come over to the advanced option. And again, we're going to change the field name to, or the field ID to time. And we've now set that up. And we're going to go back to content and set this to be 50% as well. So they'll sit next to each other. All we need to do now is position these with the department. So there we go. So the final thing we need to do is just drop in that hidden field that passes over the data for the vehicle that's been talked about. So again, we're going to come in, add an item, change this to hidden, click on there. The label, we can set that to, well, what we're going to do is we're going to do use dynamic. So we're going to click on dynamic and we're going to say post title. And because this is a template, we can use the post title. It will change every time someone looks at a different vehicle. But if you use this on a static page, you can do the same thing anyway, because it'll pull that data in. So you can set the hidden field to be whatever you want if you need it. So what we can do is we can just click on this little wrench icon if we want, and we can set any befores and afters. We can change anything we kind of want on there. All we need to do, though, is come up to advanced. We're going to change this from field two to vehicle. Like I say, that gives us short code underneath. What we do want to do is set the default value in this example. So we're going to click on dynamic and we're going to choose post title again. So that will now set the post title, which will be the name of the vehicle. Like I say, you can't see this because it's hidden, so we can just leave that at the bottom. Okay, so so far we've set up the form, we've put all the form fields we need in, we've dropped in that select list and all those things. But now we need to set it up so this pick a date and pick a time will only show up if you choose the right department. So how do we do that? It's very easy. We just set some conditions on the elements, the form elements that we want to show at specific times. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the picker data and we're going to come up with the condition option. Inside there, we've got three different kinds of conditions. We've got always visible, we've got show if, and we've got hide if. It doesn't matter which way around you use the show or the hide, it's entirely up to you how you want to use these. You just set the condition up that's relevant to the way you want to work. So there's no right or wrong way of doing that. There's just two ways of achieving the same end result. So for our example, we'll use show if. So we'll click on show if, and that opens up the ability to set the conditions. Now you can set up multiple conditions, all of which have to be met before this will show. So if you need to have a more complex condition setup, you can do that inside here. However, for this example, we just want to link this through the department and then choosing the right department will show or hide these relevant fields. If you want multiple conditions, simply hit the multiple conditions option and then you'll have all those options available to you. So the first thing we're going to do is choose the field ID that we're going to check this against. So we're going to click on field ID and you can see this is why naming all of your fields just makes life a lot easier. We know exactly which one we want, which is department. We can now select that. So we'll select that. Then we have the operator. And you can see we've got a lot of different operators. So we can check against various different kinds of things. Again, we want this simple. All we need to do is specify that it's equal to a specific department result. So we can click on this. It now says department is equal to, and we can set the value that we want. If we wanted to, we can use dynamic data, but because we've created this department list manually, we can do that manually as well. So you can see if we come back onto our content, there's our two options. So we can just specify which of these conditions is going to be met. So you want to book a test drive, and I'm going to copy that from there to make sure that there's no spelling mistakes. And then we're going to say 
there we go. So we're now just saying that we want the field ID of department is equal to book a test drive to display this particular field. So we're going to do the same thing again now for the next field, which is the pick a time. So we're going to come back up to condition. We're going to set that up to show if, and you'll see there's a little bit of a problem here. We don't have that option to choose which field we want. And this is a little bit of a graphical quirk that I found with this plugin, and hopefully it'll be rectified in an update. But if you find this happens to you, click on the multiple conditions option and then uncheck it and you'll find the field ID will come back up and you can start to check against it. So just bear that in mind. If that field ID condition is missing, just hit that multiple conditions option to open it up. Click, choose department again is equal to, I'm gonna say book a test drive. So we've now set up the conditions to when these next two fields will actually display. So with that in place, we've done the major part of setting up the form itself. The next thing you need to do is choose what happens when someone chooses the relevant department, picks the details, fills out their form, and then sends it through. So which department is it going to be sent through to? This is where we have some new options. By default, if we say we open up the action after submit, it says email. And that's a default action that's part of Elementor Pro. We don't want that. We're going to close that down. And we've got dynamic content for Elementor. We have some extra options. The one we want is dynamic email. I'm going to click to open that up. And you can see we now have the tab that says dynamic email. So we're going to open that. And we have the option to add items. Now, this is great because you can stack multiple different items that relate to various different things that you want to do. So where we have two different departments, we're going to create two of these dynamic email entries, one to send the sales inquiry through to the sales inquiry department, and one to send the book a uh, sort of test drive to the test drive department. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to click on add item and this will open up all the options now for our dynamic email. We can enable it or disable it. So you can set multiple conditions and enable or disable as you see fit. So the first thing we can do is set the condition now for what we want to trigger this action, this particular email to be sent through to. So what we can do is we can say we can choose the department in much the same way as we use this to trigger the condition to show or hide the picker date and time fields. We can use that to specify where the email gets sent to and what data we want to transmit as part of that particular email. So we're going to say department. We then have conditions. We've got empty, valued, less than, greater than, or equal to. We're going to choose equal to, and then we say the value condition. So again, we have dynamic if we want to use it, but for this example, we simply want to put in the department we want to send this through to. So we're going to drop in, first of all, sales inquiry. So if someone fills out and chooses the sales inquiry as what they want to send this email form to, that'll go through to the relevant department based upon this condition. So the next thing he says is new message from ACF Beginners, which is the name of my site, which doesn't make a lot of sense. So what we can do is we can change that. And we can just put in sales inquiry regarding and then we need the name of the vehicle that we want to actually find out more information about. So what we need to do is we can jump back to the form fields. In there, we can open up our hidden field and just make sure we've got the right name for this. So if we come into advanced, there's the short code. We're going to copy that from there. We're going to come back into our dynamic email conditions, open that up, and we're going to just drop that field in there. So now we've dynamically generated the name of this email based upon a hidden field. So it's really cool that you can use these and you can use this in the normal Elementor Pro forms anyway. You're not limited to only using that in this particular plugin. You can use it in the ordinary forms as well. So bear that in mind because it's a really cool way of being able to pass over data that's dynamically generated through on your emails. Next up, we've got the two. So this is where you can set your department. So I'll leave that one in there for now. But obviously you'd have something like sales inquiries at mybusiness.com. Okay. From email, we can set that dynamically as well. So at the moment, it says from a particular set email address. But what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that. And we're simply going to drop in. We're going to put the field in there. And we're going to change that over to email. So this is, again, dynamically generated. The from name, we can change that. Drop in that short code. And we're going to put in name. Now, these are just the names of the default fields for name and email as part of this form. But we're dynamically generating that data. Scroll down, if you want to, you can set any then conditions up for the email body. You can use a template inside here. So if you wanted to create your own custom template for these emails that are part of dynamic content for Elementor. So if you want to get really creative, you can do just that. 
So that's our first email condition set up. So the next thing we need to do now is set the second one up for the second department. So what we can do is if we want to, we could easily just duplicate this. So let's just close that down, hit duplicate, open this up now and change the condition. So now you'll notice that sometimes you get this weird little glitch where the condition doesn't display. If you find you come across that, all you need to do is come back into the form fields, open that up, open the department up, and then generally when you go back to the dynamic emails option and open it up, you'll see that's back in there. It's a weird little glitch, but if you're aware of it, you'll know the next time if you have that problem, exactly what to do. Okay, so all we need to do is change some of the values. First of all, the condition can't be sales inquiry. We need to set this now to book a test drive. Then we're gonna change this over and say sales inquiry. We're gonna set that to test drive and then the vehicle name. Email address, we're gonna change that to a different one now, which will be the second department. So we're just gonna put in a different email address on there. And then we can leave the rest of the information because we want the form email, we want the from name and so on. So we just change the pieces that we actually need. And that is basically our form all set up. So we hit update, we can jump over now and take a test of this and see exactly how all those different conditions that we set up work. Okay, so here's our form. As you can see, everything is as it was before. We've got the sales inquiry department that shows just the name, the email address, and the message. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly test that out. So we'll drop in my name, we'll drop in a fake email address, and we'll drop in, and we'll drop in a message. This is a sales inquiry. Now the vehicle we're looking at when we're sending this is the Ford RS. So when we check the email, that should be passed over as part of that hidden field. Hit send, providing everything's okay. You can see now our form has been sent successfully and that's updated the form. Now what I would re generally recommend is if you're doing something like this where you've got a contact form, it might be a nice idea to send someone over to another page that says, we're just confirming what you've sent as opposed to having this little message at the bottom because some people can miss that. But again, it's entirely up to you and if you want to do it, you just set up another option for an action after submit that just redirects. So it'll do all those different actions for you. Okay, so let's do the same thing again. Now let's change that from sales inquiry to book a test drive. There's our two additional fields that only show up when we choose that department. Let's choose a date. Let's just choose a time. And let's just drop in my name and details again. And we'll call this different at email.com. And we'll put it book a test drive. Okay, so we'll hit send on there. And that'll send our second form through. So let's go and check now our emails just to see exactly what's come through to us. So there we go, there's the first email, which is the sales inquiry. If we take a look at the subject, you can see we've got sales inquiry regarding the Focus RS, so it's past that hidden field data over. The department, sales inquiry, the name, email, message, and the vehicle details. Now you could put whatever you wanted inside here. If you wanted to put a direct link through to the vehicle, you could drop that in. But you will notice this one little limitation we have. Because we set this through to the sales department, we still have the pick a date and pick a time fields included in the email. And that's because we're using the default template that just passes all of those fields over. If you wanted to fine tune this and take those out, you could easily adjust the content that's being sent over. Or like I said, you could take a look at using the templates and build different templates for each of those emails. It's up to you, but this just shows you how easy it is to create these more dynamic emails and dynamic forms. It's very simple and straightforward, but you can get as creative as you want to, as you need to. And next up, we have the test drive email. Again, you can see the title of the email is coming through with the test drive for on that specific vehicle, the pick a date and times included in there, the vehicle details and so on. So by using these techniques, you can easily set up much more complex emails, send them through to various different departments, use different triggers, whole range of things. Basically, the limitation is your imagination on what you can do with it. So this is a great way of being able to create those more interactive forms, especially if you link it through to something like a template, like we've done in this video, gives you a lot of scope to do these kinds of things. So that's what I wanted to show you in this video. So that's what I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully what this has demonstrated is the power inside dynamic content for Elementor really does open up some great unique possibilities. Well, if you've used this plugin or you consider using it for this kind of feature, let me know in the comment section below. Better still, if you have used it to create something like this, drop some links in there and tell me what you've done. I'd love to see the work that you've created. As always, all the applicable links for this and everything else we covered is in the description below so you can check those out. My name is Paul C. This has been WP Tats and until next time, take care.